evening. What a day I have had. I'm not telling, I swear to God, last night I purposely stayed up so I could watch the Pascal show. Guess what happened? Yep, my medication kicked in and I fell asleep on the sofa. Yep, so I missed it. However, I knew everyone was going on about, I was going to talk about the uh, DCS report and all this. Like, I thought, you can't, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Hey, the child is a minor, so all the paperwork, everything, the court cases, everything will be sealed. So we couldn't talk about it. Um, I've got a comment up here. I have a question. Did you hear on Pascal? Yes, I did hear that. And he's looking into a non-profit to receive money to avoid taxes. Yes. He's got a... Uh, apparently, the lawyer he's got can't do that. For some reason. I don't know. So he's, he's looking in. He's got another lawyer. He's got a lawyer. Put it that way. And they're looking into setting something like that up. So... Well, it all takes time. God, this chair is so wobbly. I'm sitting on. I'm going to end up on the floor one day. So, but it all takes time. So, I hope you've all had a good day. I've been uploading my laptop again because I did have to do like a sort of reboot. They don't call it a reboot on here, they call it something else. So, that took most of my day up. And then I thought, okay, I'll just log into all my Facebook accounts and all that lot. It took me up to about, what, 6.30 today, tonight, to finally get back onto my Facebook account. And um, I've got on my Instagram, I've got on my Twitter. I can, As you know, I can still do a live. Will show up on Facebook as I'm doing a live, but I just can't log into my my account. So I sent an email like saying what's happening, why can't I log in? They emailed me back. Is this a, is this if this is true? If it is a tax, is if it is a tax? No, um, there's some non-profit. Right, like over here in the UK, I don't know if they do it over there, right? Over here in the UK, you can donate stuff, right, to a charity store, right, to a charity, whatever, to a store or an organisation. And you will get asked if you want to have the tax thing. And I'm going... No, I don't want to pay tax on it. And they go, no. Well, it is. Say that I uh, sell something or I give them £10. Say I get donated £10. The government then will give them something like 20% or whatever of back as well. So 20% of my £10 the government will give to them. So there are charities that are that do that way and they don't get done for tax evasion. I don't know how it works in the U US, but but he's not using it for personal. Right, well, he's not using it for personal. He's using it uh, for um, flyers um, and things like that. He's using it to find to help find Sebastian. He's not using it for himself. 
He closed the go from me down because he was fed up of people going on at him. Like, and I, it really annoyed me that did. Because it shouldn't be like that. Hi, Juicy Jules. Like Summer Moon's case may not f uh, find uh, sag. Yes, too sag. And like I can't understand why Summer County won't use that uh, UCE. No, I'm from, originally, I'm from Birmingham. Yep. And I now live up in Scotland. So, no, I'm not a Londoner. I'm not anything to do with London. <laughs> but, no, I'm originally from Birmingham, West Midlands, in England. And I moved up to Scotland in, well, 2008. So I've been here a while now, and I've still got my accent. But apparently someone said to me once, they said, you won't lose your accent up here. I said, really? They said, yeah. I said, because what it is, because there's, um, it's a, a city full of students, right? There's a lot of different accents all the way. So apparently you don't lose your accent when you come to Scotland to leave. And yet, when I go down to Birmingham, hi, they say they will say to me, "Your accent has changed a little," and I tend to throw in little uh, slang words. Right, so I'll go. I'm just going to get some, do my messages, messages like, and they go, "They look at you weird." I go. So then I get up to go out and I go, where are you going? I said, to get my messages. I go, well, what, don't you need your phone? Right, because they're thinking messages on your phone. And I'm, no, I mean, I'm going to the shops. I need to buy some items of food. Oh, so you're going shopping. Yes. And then there's, um, what's that wrong? Uh, Greeting. I don't I don't pronounce it right, but it's like it's the same someone said once well, I was talking to me and they said there's a little girl greeting her little eyes out. And I went greeting. Right? And I said crying. So uh someone said it once down Birmingham. Said the word greeting. And it threw them. It just throws them. When you throw these little words in, they go, what the hell? But my daughter, who lives down Glasgow, about an hour and a half away by car, if that, maybe. Right. Um, she, she's still got the brummy accent, but she uses a lot of the Glaswegian words so I don't it's like up here it goes I eh and things like that and go okay fine yes just say yes not eh it's like Teletubbies eh no it's yes but no juicy jewels I am from Birmingham and I live up in Scotland anyway we don't want this case going like Summer Moon. We really don't. And like I said, some of the county haven't utilised all their... Hold on, I've just got some of the Haven't utilised all their... What they can. Because uh, the private investigator who used to work for Seth, Said so she got Seth to sign Sebastian Sebastian up to CUE organisation. Now, an organisation 
that help, they've got resources they can use to help foreign children. But they won't do anything because they have the full respect of the law enforcement. So they won't do nothing without law enforcement coming, saying yes, or asking them to come in. But some in the county haven't asked them to come in. Why? And yet, I was watching an old interview they did. Remember that first interview law enforcement did? It was outside that fire station. Sure, sure. It was outside the fire station. And he said, we are utilising every resource we can. Nope, you're not. Anyway, by the way, is my sound okay? Is it okay or am I still breaking up? Because today I've done a mount, I've lost count how many times I've done little recordings with video and with me talking and then listening back to see if there's any hiccups or, or anything like that. Oh, great. Good. I think I've solved that problem. I've just got to get back onto my YouTube channel. So, yeah, apparently uh, they've turned around and said, oh, I violated their spam, their scam, and their scams, and everything. I went, so I emailed back, I said, excuse me, have you got the right account? So I've sent them my email for that account, and my account address, you know what I mean? I said, because all my videos are being pre-approved by you before being put out to public. Now, if there's anything on my videos that breaks their standards, right, it'll get restricted. Like the other night I did um, a live and I put on some about, um, uh, who was it now? Monty Python thing, right? I only showed a short clip. Only showed a very short clip. You know, they will not post it because of that. So I had to go back into the video and edit that out. I edited it out, re uploaded it again, and it went through. So I said, have you got the right account? Please check. I said, I've, I've, I'm a new channel. I said, but my channel is building up daily. Daily, I'm getting new people joining. And I said, so all my videos are being approved by you before going out. So hopefully they'll get back to me on that. I'm not giving up on this because I want my channel back. I don't know why. I've got all my others, Facebook. X, Instagram, TikTok, I've got all those. I just can't get my YouTube one. So I can get onto my page, I just cannot, cannot log in. So this live is going out now and it's on YouTube, right? But I can't, once the live finishes, that's it. No one else gets to see it. Right? So, unless I upload it onto YouTube, where then people watch it on replay. So, I'm not happy at the moment. So, I better sort this out. I've worked hard to get build my channel up. I've worked hard. Anyway, so, like, I said, I missed that one, but I did watch the video this morning when I woke up. And I woke up about 8 o'clock this morning, pretty early. And I knew he wasn't saying nothing about DC child services. I knew it. He can't. But you see, what people was angry about was Tony Mathis had hinted on this other channel. I'm not sure if it was a TikTok channel or 
an Instagram channel or what. But he, he kind of like insinuated that, yes, we're going live on the Pascal show and Seth will be talking about DCF, DCS. And they, uh, but he can't. He can't talk about it. He can't even tell Tony about it. He can't. So, anyway. But then there's another video that came out, which I I think this is the best one. Right. Thankfully, I was able to get... Well, I could just still go on to YouTube and got this channel. You know what I mean? But I just find it easy. If I like a channel, I like, if I see a channel and I like what's being said, or I think... I can use that in my life. If it's tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow or whenever, I put it on my Facebook page. So I was glad to get my Facebook page open. And I did see this come up a few times on my YouTube channel. Right? Now, I will say, because I'm not... I'm logged into my YouTube because I can't get into my YouTube channel. When these are being shown, when these YouTube channels are being shown, you will get adverts. I pay like £19, £20 a month so that I don't have to have adverts on my lives, on my replays, anything. Or even if I'm watching a channel, I don't get the adverts. But because I'm not logged into my channel, I I'm able to just watch it as everyone else would and I'm getting the adverts. And I'm not paying again so that I don't get the adverts. Not when I'm paying it monthly already. But I like this. You gave him the benefit of doubt. Doubt at first. Now I've changed my mind. Why, SG? Why have you changed your mind? Let's see if my headphones will work. Oh god, I'm just waiting for my headphones to connect. But why have you why have you changed your mind on him? Because I was a bit weary of him at the beginning. But at least he stopped all this arguing. Because Seth is now Focused in another way, you know what I mean? Yes, it d that was a tease. Yes. But if anyone, to be honest with you, SG, you sh everyone should have realised he can't talk about that. He can't. Do you know what I mean? He could... He lose his job and everything if he spoke about what those papers are saying. However, someone posted on a Facebook page today a conversation that she's been having with this woman. And I've managed to save them all and I've got them in my email account. So we can look at that if you want. You know, as soon as said nothing about the child services report, as soon as said nothing, right? By saying that, everyone's glued in on that 
channel. And all the people was going to that channel. You know what I mean? So, you shouldn't have said that. So, I think in future, if, if he says anything, you want to take it with a pinch of salt. I knew he wouldn't be talking about it. I knew he... That's probably why I fell asleep. I didn't even get... I even set my phone for the alarm to go off at 1... Eight, well, at 12.50. Ten minutes before it was due to come on. So it would give me time to wake up. And I come off here and by... Ten past eleven, I got some... Something going on here. Yeah. That was a bit of clickbait sort of thing by saying that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was doing something on, on this and I was waiting for that to go through. Right. And it still didn't help. So, anyway, I fell asleep. And I set my alarm for 10 to 12. I didn't even hear my alarm on my phone go off. That's how dead to the world I was. But then I wake up, and once I wake up, it's like, okay. And I toss and turn then all night long. But it shouldn't have, you know, it shouldn't not have said that. And, but, I don't know, but we're going to watch this one now. And I'll pull up that, those messages that I've got. That was on a Facebook page, so I'm not breaking any confidentiality here. It was there's no names mentioned, nothing. But you can tell who they are talking about as the messages go on. So we're going to watch I'll speed it up a little bit as well because it's what 53, 35 minutes long. So I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit. All right, get past this B. Oh. Uh, the new refocus, the rejuvenation of your efforts and what that's entailing. As for focus for me has always been on Sebastian, uh, finding new tips, getting new information and in, getting to new search areas, uh, have some issues with particular people you're not going to work with, with me, then you, you need to, to go. Uh, I've had Tony here showed up. Great time for me because the weight of everything was was pushing on my shoulders, you know, searching and then coming home and doing podcasts and trying to keep my son's name out there. So I really appreciate Tony stepping on board when I asked him to. Uh, it's just more information, more ground to cover and search. When it comes to seriously good mayonnaise, it has to be Heinz. From the first moment anyone set eyes on her, they were hooked. A wife who alienates her. Same thing. So Seth, you're continuing the ground searches uh, with a group of people. How many on a daily basis? And I know you necessarily aren't out there with them every day, but what does that group look like? What areas are they focused on? And uh, what's the day like? Uh, not giving you information on where we're searching. I have to keep certain things close to the vest. The reason we took our, our searches private to begin with was because of people following around my
kind of volunteers threatening them. Their safety is important to me. And I'm not gonna let somebody else get hurt or injured looking for my kid. You know, I want to find him, but not at the at the cost of other people's lives. I see. And when you when you talk about, and we all heard about that in social media, right? Different threats and things like like that coming in. Um, what did you What did you make of that? Bunch of cowards. People want to threaten most of Sebastian's army is a good 90% females because normally moms are the ones that are protecting their kids at home or when they're at home, they're, they're responsible for their children. Dads, you know, go to work, make money, make sure, you know, standard nuclear role. And when it comes down to Sebastian's army, 90% of them are all ladies. I, I'm, my job is to protect people. That's my profession. My, my job as a dad is to protect my son and, I'm not perfect personally every day. I feel like I fail because I can't find him and it, it sucks. There's, there's no words to put on it, but I got to find him. I got to try to make it up. I mean, if I had known the information that I know knew a week after he went missing, things would have been different and I wouldn't be in my kitchen having an interview with you. I'd probably be in my kitchen making dinner. for me and my son or teaching let's, him how to do it, do it again <laughs> so let's talk a little, little bit about that because i think a lot of people have focused in on the search which is which is fine i'm so i just love to hear you say sebastian's army because i can kind of see these housewives these um homemakers these coming out when I put the video back on, let me know if you've got sound for the video. Individuals who have the time and more than just the time, they have the heart and the soul uh, to want to invest in and try to do everything they can and, uh, to locate your son. Um, so I, I think now I kind of can envision this. Uh, do you think I summed it up pretty much what it's like? In terms it of is. Uh, I mean, there. The old saying, nothing like the wrath of a woman scorned. And uh, most people wouldn't want to mess with somebody's child because you don't want to deal with mama. And there's thousands, probably even millions of people. That there's, there's people in different countries, South America, Africa, Australia. Europe, Ireland, France, Spain, and the world is answer. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you point that out, Seth. In a way, someone who has a Facebook account, who has Twitter, who has any. I've just checked my sound system, all of you. And I noticed earlier when I was watching it on my TV, the sound kept going in and out. And I thought, is it my hearing playing up? And then, so I think it's on her end, the sound goes in and out, because I did notice it on my TV earlier, but I've just ignored it. But otherwise, sound is okay, okay? Any social media outreach, and even beyond that, if you just contact other individuals, friends of yours, and proliferate the message about 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers, missing from Tennessee, gone now for three months. I mean, and a photo, uh, the story, uh, that's what everybody can do. And um, Seth, you know, I hope that effort uh, ends up leading you to your son, because I know no one uh, cares more about your son on this platform or in the world than you. 
there's a lot of people out there that have been helping me try to find my son. And I appreciate everybody's efforts. And some of the things that Chris and Katie said will come true. I find my son. He's got a lot of people that want to meet him. These people that are out here searching for countless hours and that are helping with tips, spreading out flyers, you know, passing information along on Facebook. They all want to meet him and none of them have. And they can. Oh my God, if this lag is found alive. It's a pray. I hope to God these every night. I get up every morning saying, please put a post up. Please show me a YouTuber telling me or a news report telling us that Sebastian has been found alive. I swear to God, I seriously think I will contemplate jumping on a plane and flying over there just to meet this lag. But I don't think I could. My anxiety, I don't like flying. I don't like being in closed in, in enclosed places either. So I'm not good in leafs. Right? And uh, so I don't like planes because they shut them doors and you're closed in. And then you're going up to some great heights, which I'm not a big fan of. I hate heights. And yes, I live on the 14th floor. But you know what? I don't look down. I look straight ahead. And I can see it high, but if I look down, it's like, whoa, you know, right? So, so there's two of my biggest fears there. A, height, B, lifts. And the same with the plane. You go in, them doors are locked. You go up and you're at a great height. And you're at the risk and mercy of a good pilot and a flipping good plane. So, I'm giving them as much information as I can without giving away everything about myself. Yeah. Well, you're... you know, you talk about meeting him, and even though people can't meet him, that's what I want this session here to be about. Uh, I've seen so many other streams and, and live shows and so on and so forth, and, and anything that anybody is doing to get the message out is good. Um, I'm so glad to see sort of a lot of that drama be stripped away. And I want to strip it away a, a layer even more. And I want to meet Sebastian. I want to meet him right now. Actually, the thumbnail that's going to come up, it's not up yet, but it's been finished. Uh, it's beautiful. with beautiful pictures uh, that you provided. So I first want to talk about uh, Katie in a different light. I want to talk about Katie in terms of when you all got married. Uh, I just want the audience to understand there was a time when things were good. There was a time when you wanted to uh, join in matrimony and have a family. So uh, can you bring us back sort of to that day when it happened and, and so on and just bring us up we into got the time? Married the day after my birthday, we got married June 21st, 2008. Uh, it was a very hot. I didn't, didn't get to spend my, I didn't get to spend the night at my house. So I was oversleeping on a couch at a friend's house because can't be in the house with the, the bride the night before the wedding. I don't take care. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and literally the stress of it all, I actually had a migraine the whole night. So it's not like I got to do anything fun or exciting. I was sitting there like, I need water. I need ibuprofen and I need my head smashed in with a hammer. <laughs> what you did know? you wear? Traditional tuxedo? Or was it a cowboy wedding? What did you wear? I wore a, it was a tuxedo. Well, no, it was a suit, brown suit. Uh, she was in a dress, beautiful dress. She was beautiful. I mean, I still remember some of the comments that she made that, she, you know, she, it gets upset here. Yeah. Find highly rated products at prices you'll love. Start your search on Amazon today. I come from the highest, the highest, the high. Oh, why would I sell for less? I do it in spirit, I do it in flesh. You're talking at. Let's move on, Jim. Uh, so that this night occurs. This is, you love her. She loves her, you. Um, so we go through, we end up getting married. 
walked down the aisle. My dad actually is the one that walked her down the aisle. Um, afterwards, we had a little country boil at the back of my parents' house. Um, sat there. Uh, there are pictures in my wedding album that I still have where I'm walking around with a huge bottle of champagne. And that's what I was drinking on all night while other people were drinking beer. I'm carrying a bottle of champagne around. And uh, my mom and dad got us a hotel room and everything. And we got there. There was some expensive cheese and grapes and stuff like that. And she started watching TV. And, and I was like, I'm drunk. I'm going to bed. <laughs> and I don't think she ever really forgave me for it or let me forget it either. But, you know. That was years ago. I mean, and it wasn't, it was shortly after that, that my family got bigger. Tell me about that moment. The moment when Katie told you we were going to have a baby. Uh, she told me and she told me pretty much on my mom's birthday on April 15th. She was like, Hey, uh, I'm pregnant. I was like, Oh, I'm going to be a horrible dad. <laughs> I mean, just it's something I've never been part of. So it's just like there's another challenge in my life, and uh, I'm probably going to fail at it miserably. So I let my mom know you're gonna, you know you're going to have another grandchild, and uh, from there it you know came along. December came around, and my son didn't want to come out. My son was I want to say five <laughs> days late. He literally held on so that he could be born on my dad's birthday. So it not only was that, but it was also Pearl Harbor Day. And it was just, you know, I remember him coming, you know, being in the hospital, dealing with all the, the, the complications because it was not a, it was a complicated pregnancy for her. She had a lot of difficulties. Midwife wasn't that best, you know, so. How was the pregnancy difficult? It was her first pregnancy that went all the way. Um, Thing. I mean, she probably doesn't want me discussing certain things, but, you know, woman, woman things that I, you know, it's, uh, I do remember at one point in time, she was like, I'm going to have a natural birth. And after having contractions for, for days on end and the nurse going, well, you're not ready to deliver the baby. And it's like my mom having to sit there and be like, these are not Braxton Hicks. These are actual contractions. And she's been having them for days. And finally, they turn around and gave her something so she would dilate because she was not dilating. And uh, and then the epidural. <laughs> so there was that. And then my, my son was here. And were you in the room when he was born? I sure was. That's great. And what was it like when you first held him? How much did he weigh? Was he teeny? He's still tiny to me. I mean... It, it was the weight, the physical weight compared to the weight that was now on my shoulders as being a dad, two different, two different things. You know, now I'm responsible for another life. I need to make sure that this life grows up. again sorry sorry right 
I'll tell you, right, it's about my grandson when he was born. He was born nine pounds something. And when he was born, we were all went up the hospital, right? And my son was going, we don't want everyone up the hospital, meaning like friends or everyone. And my daughter turned around and said, you think, mom, you think you're going to stop my mum coming up there? You think you're going to stop your mum coming up there? Don't think so. And when we get to there, and we're holding a baby and all this, like, and we're taking photos and everything. And we walk out of the hospital and we're getting a taxi. Right. And um, she went to me and said, Do you think they've got the, the weight right, Mum? I went, What do you mean? She said, Well, it doesn't feel like nine pounds in weight because it didn't. It felt really light. Right. I said, Do you? I think, said, I think the nurses get that thing right. They do get that one thing right, which is the weight. So I hope to God the sound is back on because I had to unmute on my mic. So I'm sorry about that. Anyway, we're going to go back and we're finished. Oh, God, still got a long way to go, but we'll carry on. And that he's taken care of. Um, yes. I do remember them taking him away. And it's like, where are you taking my kid? Um, you know, well, we got to go clean him up and everything. And, you know, and as soon as they got him all cleaned up and they went to go change his, put his diaper on and everything, he peed all over the nurse. I was just like, okay, he's mine. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the first things he did when he, when he came out is I have a half smile that when I smirk at people. And it's the first thing he did when he came out. He just looked at me and just smirked. And I'm like... Yeah, chip off the old block there. That's funny. Do you remember um, the first words he spoke? I remember the first word he spoke, yeah. What was it? Not not a word that should be issued. Oh, he said a cuss word? Of course. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah. All yeah. right. Second first word, word was dad. Uh, third word was uh, was bottle. But, you know. That's funny. <laughs> what about walking? Was he a quick walker or? He was a quick crawler. He crawled everywhere. Uh, he was delayed in the walking. Um, a lot of the pictures I have uh, when he was an infant, most infants sleep for like, you know, 16 to 18 hours a day. Not Sebastian. Sebastian was awake for 16 to 18 plus hours a day. Like when he fell asleep, it's because he ran out of energy. Like the batteries died as he was crawling across the floor. That's what I say about my grandson. You, and you know, that, that's that was the first thing that led me to think that maybe something was special about my son. Um, so that started the trips into the hospital. Uh, for the first six to eight months of his life, he was pretty. We were in and out of the hospitals all the time. He was sick. Uh, couldn't do much to keep him not from being sick. But after about eight months, he stopped being sick. His immune system finally took over and hearty little boy. So basically you're talking just colds and coughs and just could never feel like he was healthy. The flu, pneumonia. And if he got sick, I ended up getting sick. I mean, I had to wait for certain things to, to take over. And so. And so at this time, Seth, you're working full time and Katie's a full time homemaker. No, I was going to school full time. I was working full time and taking care of Sebastian and Katie was working full time. Oh, OK. So you guys just tried to swap your hours out. So somebody was with him or he yeah. had nannies or no, no, he uh, without getting into too many issues. Uh, we oscillated shifts when I was going to school full time and working full time. Was trying to also have somebody that you know babysitter that would come and take care of him and that was a lovely lady that would live right down the road she would she loves sebastian so she was watching him for a little bit until things just wasn't working out anymore with her circumstances and uh then katie turned around and uh joined the navy and when she joined the navy i went to being pretty much stay at home because I didn't have anybody else to watch Sebastian. And we were noticing that he was having difficulty speaking, delay in speech, uh, motor, what is it, uh, gross motor skills, fine motor skills. There was a lot of, a lot of stuff that 
things had to be changed, we, we kind of knew he wasn't going to, he was special. He wasn't going to be a normal child. So things had to change. Yeah. Being a parent for the first time, you really don't know what to expect. And then when you find out that your child needs certain things, you just got to do it. You know, you make sacrifices. And she joined the Navy to make sure that he had insurance and stuff like that that would cover the issues. And I became a stay-at-home parent. So you were very, very close then. I mean, when you're the stay-at-home parent, you are 24-7. Uh, did his, after that, did his sleep improve? Was his health improve? Or is he, like me, an insomniac, just up all oh, the time? Oh, still in this, you know. His sleep improved once his health improved, but boy, don't sleep eight hours a day. You know, he could be awake for 14, 16 hours a day and be like, mm. there's times that he's come over here for like a week on like spring break or whatnot. And he's like, dad, I'm not tired. And I'm like, well, you don't have school tomorrow. If you want to stay up and watch TV and play toys and all that sort of stuff, have at it. But just remember tomorrow we got stuff to do and you're going to have to get up and do it. Yeah, the next day he realizes why he should go to sleep. <laughs> they late dollar short. And I see these pictures of him that you've been kind enough uh, to show. And he has this big blonde head of hair. Was he blonde for a long time? Uh, he still actually has his blonde hair. I had blonde hair when I was a kid. I was a, what they call a toe head. Um, and so was he. he pretty much. But now it's starting to get brown and darker brown. And... By the next couple of years, his hair will probably be as dark as mine. And so uh, we've talked a little bit about him, his early years, uh, some struggles in terms of health, and then he got better, still a little insomniac. When did he start walking? Is he three, four? He started walking, and I'm going to say that he was like two and a half. He started walking before we left Georgia and headed to California. Um, he was definitely walking beforehand. Once he started walking, it wasn't really walking. He, he ran. I mean, he ran. I mean, the worst thing in the world is my buddy was at the house watching him while I was at work. And I got the text message that he took his first steps. I was heated. I was like, I missed the best part of, you know, the first thing. You know, I wanted to be there when he took his first steps when I was at work. So it sucks. But as soon as I got home, he was running by then. And he's never really stopped. He's a, he's a kid in motion. And I hope he's still in motion now. Well, I think that speaks a lot, though, for his resilience and to show the kind of, you know, person he is. He was a night owl, right? He was a night owl. He was a day owl. He didn't require a lot of sleep. And I think that that might lend itself for somebody who could have left uh, and who could still possibly be on the move. I mean, I think we all have to keep hope because we have absolutely no evidence right now that he isn't here. We have no evidence that he's not here. and We have no evidence that he is here. I do still know that he's right here and he's always on here. There are a hundred reasons why Revolut is the future of money. Reason and so Seth, um, tell me now, once he started school, did he start kindergarten at five or did you have him go later? How did all that work once it was time for school? Uh, he started, well, we were in Georgia when he was supposed to start, and they were giving us too many issues. So Katie was in uh, Chicago at boot camp, and I actually moved back home, and uh, I got him enrolled in school for half the day, and I had him enrolled in an educational center for another half. And we weren't there very long, but it was enough that everything that I've been working with him on between the school and the educational center had everything just kind of meshed in and it, it was great and then we moved to california and needless to say their education system is not that great in california for the first year uh where his date of birth was they wouldn't let him join to go to school um he was and then when they did finally let him go the first year when i looked back on it like a year later at all of his art projects, there was a letter S. Quite literally, they took a year to teach my son, quote, unquote, the letter S. 
my son knew the alphabet. He knew, you know, we were working the time that he spent going to school and going to the educational center and mesh to got everything going. They used animal therapy and everything else. They gave him comfortable in what he was doing and it worked. And then when we moved to California, they just don't really have a good pastor when they're younger than when they get older. And that inhibited a lot of growth for him. And so uh, when he were he was in these classes, did you enroll him in special education classes or mm-hmm. was he able to assimilate in regular education? Simulate in regular education. And at this point, you are still Mr. Mom handling all the duties, or was Katie out of the Navy by then? No, Katie didn't get out of the Navy until uh, until after our divorce. I see. Full-time mom for, or I should say dad, full-time daddy for how many years then? At what point, what age was Sebastian when you all separated and divorced? We separated, she filed, and divorce was finalized in, the, in 2019. Um, now, I had I'd already started work. I started back at work during the Navy has what they call respite care, which is them basically basically sending somebody that's qualified for your autistic child or your, your disabled child that is qualified to actually watch him. And you're allowed a certain amount and a number of hours. And I was back to work working part time doing what I And then when Katie's not deployed, I was pulling night shifts whenever I could good while she was at home and just trying to get back into the workforce before where you got too old never too old no just winter been out of the workforce for a little bit as a stay-at-home parent nobody really wants to hire you anymore they, they figure that you forgot to how to you know add one plus one you know, you, you supposedly forget the bare basics of actually how to complete tasks, which I never really understood because when you're a stay-at-home parent, you do everything. You're right. You manage that household. You make meals. You Doctor's take care of appointments, play everything. dates, you name it. You, I mean, and it wasn't just that. I mean, I was still taking care of all the bills, making sure that everything was paid. I mean, I had made the, you know, the agreement with Katie at that point in time when she joined the Navy that... She just focused on her career and I'll take care of everything else. And that's, that was, that was my promise to her. Well, I think certainly your message here, just a side note, you know, a lot of people that might be listening are a stay at home parent. And uh, I'm sure that your story resonates, resonates with them. Um, So tell me a little bit about, I, I love this picture that I found of Sebastian and he's actually in a, I think they're called, the cubato or something like that like a small backhoe um who's in that picture and what was he doing and is he just good with machinery he likes machinery uh his stepdad works in heavy equipment so we're living in henderson they were and an equal job chris was teaching him how to operate heavy equipment and they sent me a video of it because I know what picture you're speaking of. And Chris literally turned around and was like, he did a great job. Katie was like, and he didn't damage anything. So it was even better, you know, but he likes, Sebastian's always like to learn new things that interest him. If it doesn't interest him, pull it to you from a gator. If it interests him, then he's right down the gator's mouth. Like, you know, he's never been one to skirt at learning something new as long as Again, it was most piece, most, with most people, it has to be enjoyable for them or that you got to want to learn it. Otherwise, you know, there's no will. Where there's a will, there's a way. And Sebastian is definitely one of those that will trudge the way. And so what, what are Sebastian's sort of top interests? He likes to do that. In other words, things he really enjoys doing. Besides playing video games? Yeah. Uh, I do know that he likes to cook. I know that. That he does enjoy, uh, you know, he really likes his Legos. He loves building things. Uh, he's got several containers of Legos. You know, he likes to do that sort of stuff. He loves to build. He likes to cook. He likes playing video games. Uh, he did. He did like doing the heavy equipment. 
uh, we would go fishing and he touching the fish is kind of icky at times for him. But that, <laughs> that goes back. To Are we going into Nag yet? Going into Nag sorry. New Super Stay Skin Tint. For glowing skin like coverage, Maybelline, New York. That goes back to the fact that he doesn't like to have his fingers dirty. He doesn't like his hands dirty. But it just, it's like with him doing Minecraft and telling him that, hey, I needed you to do online school, you know. And he didn't want to, but I spoke to him, and it's like it's not permanent. It's just a little setback, not to mention it will open plenty of doors. You like Minecraft and the, uh, the system that they have up here, for their online schooling, it opens up college courses at Austin P, where they teach them how to do data programming and things using Roblox and Minecraft. So it's not like it's going to be a dead, you know, you're sitting at the table all day long, you know, his God, his God brothers in, in it. He does the online schooling, so he's going to have somebody that was going to be there with him. And I just wanted him to, I wanted him to get his therapy, so that way he could start correcting his own behavior through therapy and everything else. So he could see where he needed to change. So a couple points you're talking about. So in the summer, you were supposed to take full-time custody of him. Is that right? And then he was going to do online schooling. Make sure I've got that right. Yes. At the end of the school year, he was supposed to come up here. I'd have him for the summer and I already have him enrolled in school because you have to, you have to start the process for up here for enrolling in online school at the beginning of the year because there's such a wait list. <laughs> and Katie and Chris were fine with that. Oops. Hot. Are you getting sound? Because I've got it on my phone and I'm not getting any sound. What the hell is going on? This is working fine earlier. Please let me know if you're getting sound from the video. Are we getting any sound, anyone? From the video? Any sound at all? Nothing from the video. Well, I've got on pause at the moment. Was you getting sound before SRB? Before I put on pause, did you get sound then? Because I'm just checking it on my phone. Yes, okay. Okay. Might just be my phone then. Sorry, you okay? And Katie and Chris were on board with this plan. Yes. Thank you. And that was supposed to happen June 1st, the end of May, something whenever like that. The school at Beach, whenever the school at Beach Academy was over. And so it sounds like Sebastian may have been, like everybody is, whenever there's change, a little bit apprehensive about online schooling. Did he, he have friends he didn't want to leave at his other school? We really didn't discuss that. Um, one of the things that I've discussed many a times with my son is that no matter how much you don't like to change, it's the only thing that is constant in life. Nothing will ever stay. 
stay the same. You have to be able to adjust. Thank you for being and yourself. Autistic children yeah, don't adjust. Well. It alone. takes a lot of enforcement communication wise and get them to see the brighter side of what's going to happen. Normally, once something starts happening that's different from his routine, and it thank takes you him for to adjust. But as soon as he adjusts, because he does, then it's just the same old thing. And he becomes adjusted to it and he excels. You have to have the right type of foundation. What was his best subject? Was there any subject that was easy for him? A couple years ago, I'd have told you math. Uh, this year, he pretty much was done with math. <laughs> you know, you, numbers numbers were, were his favorite subject for the last, I want to say, two or three years in California became, before he came up here. I think, uh, in my opinion, he liked it. But I think it's just... Try teaching me math in school nowadays, and I'm going to look at you like, I don't know what you're talking about. Multiply factions, so on. So some of these things that they're teaching our kids now just does not make sense to me. But I'm not a rocket scientist, so I don't have to worry about that. Him being able to go to his therapy to sort of help correct some of the things that were going on that were of concern. What were his top concern issues, if you will? Inappropriate discussion and inappropriate behavior. Having having the wrong type of discussion, like you, certain things you don't discuss at the dinner table. Religion, politics, you know, those things that your parents always told you we never discuss at the table. Having inappropriate conversations with people at school. You know, if you want to have a conversation like that, then ask them to go speak to your therapist. Ask to speak to, don't have them with your, your the child next to you because they don't know where you're coming from. So, you know, in this vein, because I think it's really important as search efforts are ha happening and to really understand uh, that trajectory of somebody, if he did leave, uh, you've talked about tactically, he doesn't like to have his hands dirty. Uh, we know about the fire ant incident. Was he also, did he care if his feet were wet or slimy or did he care? At my house, his feet were normally clean. As for socks, he normally had a sock on. Metal detox, concentrated with glycoamine for night nap package. I don't like my legs. I see floors. The reason I don't wear shorts, I always had like a big. She normally had a sock on. He would complain that his feet are cold all the time. And it's like, well, you have, you have house shoes you can wear. You have socks that you can put on. No matter how many times I told him, listen, your feet are cold and you're cold, wear a pair of socks. So, oh, keep the body heat in. Instead, he'd rather just have a blanket. But most of the time I would see him, he'd have one sock on, one sock off. And it's like, Sebastian. Where's your other sock? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Sounds like we got a task in here. Let's find the other sock. There goes the next 45, 50 minutes looking for a missing sock. <laughs> so I find this very interesting because there's been a lot of talk about him being barefoot. But did he have socks on? I have a son who hates to wear shoes and he hates to be barefoot, but he loves to run around in socks. Is that the situation? Could he have left in socks? I guess it's a possibility. I wasn't there. Would you say, though, that would be more possible than being barefoot just based on his attitude toward having cold feet? No, because even here with cold feet, he wouldn't put socks on. He'd have one sock on, one sock off. They don't stay on. But like, he'd go to bed with socks on, and when he woke up, he'd be barefoot. Socks are, like, rolled up underneath a pillow, underneath a blanket, on the other side of the bed. You know, on an average, he would leave, and I would pull his bed out, and I'd find, you know, four and a half socks on the other side of the bed between the bed and the wall. And I'm like, oh, that's why you have no matching pairs of socks. They're all over here. I've washed all the other matching pair, you know, but all the, you know, the ones that are matching, the ones that are clean are dirty and they're stuck between the bed and the wall. What size of shoe did he wear? Uh, the pair of boots that I bought him were size 10 and a half. Wow. So pretty big feet. I mean, for 15, 10 Don't and a half. Don't make fun of his feet. <laughs> hey, when you have a size five foot like me, size you know seven is gigantic uh so i respect a size 10 and a half he was probably going to be same size as i wear going to be tall yeah oh yeah 
when he was three years old, I couldn't wait for the day he turned three because the old wives tell was at the age of three when he was born, measure him, you double it, and that's how tall he's going to be. The day he had, the day he turned three years old at that time, I put him up against the wall and I measured him, and he was three foot three inches at three. And I was wow. like, awesome. He's going to be six foot six. Anything over six foot, and I'm good. You know? So that's that's my goal was for him to be, you know, six foot six. Now you Jen, said I think, Jen, I think to your question about the barefooted versus socks, I think really the only thing that's been stated at this point is that all the shoes were accounted for, and that's really all we know. Yeah, his uh, old pair of tennis shoes, his new pair of tennis shoes, the pair of boots that I bought him, and the house shoes, they're all accounted for. I just don't know if anybody has asked this question, and I think it's an important one. If Katie knows how many socks he has, are all the socks there? And I do. I love hearing Seth talk about his son. Because we could come in from his heart. You know what I mean? What do you get from Katie? Oh, he loves, he likes his Minecraft. He likes this, he likes that. It's like she's just running off all these things that he likes. She doesn't go into detail about it. What he, you know what I mean? It's like, do I have to say this? Okay. So she says it. But I love to hear Seth talk about song. I mean, this is why I'm playing this video. Rather than the video I was going to have a look at. I do think that's an important question because a lot well, of people... I'll let you know. At my house, I can't tell you how many pairs of socks he has. Because if you get a hole in a pair of socks, I throw that one away. And then you get a hole in another pair. And I'll make sure that one's ripped up. And, you know, I could even tell you how many pairs of socks I have. <laughs> now, I can tell you how many pairs of Naruto socks he has and his ninja socks. Because they're the ones that come clear up to your knee, and they come in packs of five. So yeah, so do I, SJ. Ten of those, and that's at your house. But I'm just wondering if anybody has asked Katie to do an inventory of socks, if she might know. It's possible. I'm just saying because he lived there, that would lend itself more that he could have left if he put socks on. Um, Jay, the host. She didn't. She couldn't even tell us what top it was he left the house in. All she can say is it was a black long sleeve t shirt, sweaty shirt sort of top with a logo on the front. Now, if we knew what logo it was, people could have put pictures out, gone online and pulled that top up and put it out on YouTube, on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You know what I mean? You're being a lot more helpful than rather than uh, just say it was a long sleeved sweat shirt, t shirt come, sweat shirt come, with a motive logo sort of thing on the front. Even when they asked Chris about it, he said, well, it's either this, this, or this. He couldn't be definite about what top it was, what design it was either. So, good luck to asking her about how many socks he's got. I think that's an important distinction between being barefoot and having socks on. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe that question has already been asked and answered. If it has, I certainly haven't seen it. Seth, I think it's an important one to answer if you have any ability to do that. I don't. Well. Hopefully we'll get the, the question to her and, and figure out if that's ever been asked because I do think it's important. You, you talked about how he likes to cook. What does he like to eat? What's his favorite food? Oh, well, that has changed throughout time. Uh, when he was younger, he like he wouldn't he didn't like meat. He wouldn't, I mean, at all. Uh, he liked his vegetables when he was a kid. He liked his oatmeal vegetables. Uh, as he grew older, he got into the chicken, chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the first time that i got him to try a hamburger we were in jo south georgia and we're running errands and he, he was in the car seat and he was like i'm hungry and i'm like okay we went through a wendy's i'm gonna get him you know my grandson loves chicken nuggets but a few years back he was on a glute 
gluten-free, dairy-free diet thing. He had to because he was having problems. So he couldn't have anything with gluten in it. Or dairy, eggs, milk. So I used to make my own chicken nuggets. Now I don't like them from McDonald's or Burger King or from anywhere. I really don't. I hate them. But when I make my own, and El, my grandson used to love doing it, he dipped the little bits into the, uh, because we couldn't use egg, we used to have to use vegetable oil or olive oil. So he dip it into the oil and then dip it into the breadcrumbs. I could sit there and eat them all night. But give me a box from McDonald's or Burger King or somewhere like that. Nope, not having them. Don't like them. Some to drink, some to eat until we got home. And I ordered me a, a single hamburger, and he, he literally took my hamburger and ate the whole thing. I was, I was just like, the boy has eaten beef. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his first burger. And uh, after that, you know, he started eating spaghetti and things like that. Oh, and I just found out the other weekend when I ordered him a burger. From, I think it was McDonald's or Burger King, one of them two. I put it on, and I always have it with the gherkins. I don't like gherkins. I don't eat burgers. I have my chicken fillets or anything like that. But I've got my beef burger, and I'll take the salad off because I know he will not eat it with lettuce or anything of like that on it. Will not eat it. But I always leave the pickled gherkin, the gherkin on it, the pickles. And he, he took it off. I said, I thought you liked them. I do. He said, but it has to be, you have to have the, the bun, the base of the bun, the burger, the, the pickle, and then red sauce on top of that. He said, but they always put the, the pickle somehow or whatever. It always gets up on the bottom. And he doesn't like it. He has to have it in that order with red sauce on the top and then the bun, top of the bun. I thought, okay, next time I'll remember that, I'll make sure that, that when they deliver the burger, I'll make sure the pickle is on the top and I'll put the red sauce on it for him. Otherwise, he will not eat the pickle. His favorite food now, he's got a lot of favorite foods uh he does like his sushi not Ooh. sushi meat but he likes sushi he likes that soybean stuff um i, I don't I hate that. sushi tofu tofu to me, it, it has no taste if i yeah i'll eat dirt some other time uh <laughs> but it, you know he likes it when we go out to have hibachi and stuff they'll put tofu in the soup and he'll eat it there and it's all fine when we're at the house he likes he likes his eggs. One of his favorite places to go eat is either IHOP or Waffle House because they serve breakfast. And he likes his pancakes. He likes his eggs and his bacon. And uh, yeah, but Chris calls him, will say to him things like, because he liked his tofu and his all that lot, right? I don't like tofu. I must admit, I admit, I don't like it. I don't even like the olives that you get in the martini when they put martini in your olive. If anyone brought me a martini with an olive in it, it would be, take that away. Can't drink that. Give me martini without the olive, I'm fine. But um, apparently Chris would uh, take the pee out of him because of him liking tofu and sushi and all that stuff. Apparently... Only gay people like that food. Here at the house, one of the things that he likes to cook and make is he will take the cheddar brats and we cook those for about 45 minutes in the skillet and then cut them up into pieces and then we start making our sauce and that's that's how he likes his spaghetti. With Parmesan cheese, he doesn't... He likes all cheeses, but when it comes down to his 
spaghetti, he just loves Parmesan cheese. Oh, he doesn't do like sharp uh, shredded, sharp cheddar on the spaghetti. spaghetti. He's got to have the Parmesan. And so tell me, if he if he left, what would be? Does he have any stranger danger type inclinations? You know, or was he, did he shy away from strangers, or could a stranger easily entice him? I don't believe a stranger would easily entice him. Uh, most of the time, when he was around me, if he didn't like your attitude when you approached me, then he was confrontational. And then that's my daddy. I will mess you up. I'll like, you know, four feet of him at that point in time. Um, but he's always been very protective of both me and his mom. Uh, as he has gotten older, you know, having conversations with him about when you're online, these people, you don't know these people, you know, you don't talk to them. You don't tell them any information to the point that he just didn't even put the headphones on anymore. You know, most of the time it's like he would have the headphones on and he's playing. Yeah. I know that his mom and stepfather don't like it, but he would play modern warfare. You know, it's a, you know, you got four people in a team trying to work toward a progressive goal. That's, that's how you build teamwork. It's how you build listening functions and commands and things of that sort where you can follow directions and you can work together with a group that you have no idea. And most of the time on my PlayStation, you know, the people that are on there are my personal friends that I actually know. One of them would be Chris, his stepfather, and the other one is my buddy up in Illinois. And, you know, that was it. And he, he I remember a conversation, he was just like, Dad, these people just don't listen. I'm telling them, you know, I'm dead here on the ground and the guy's coming around the building and they're not listening and they run around the building and they get shot. And, uh, and I was like, and I looked at him and I said, well, son, that's why when I play the game, I have the volume off and I don't listen to him. And he was like, oh, and I was like, you don't see me getting angry and aggravated either, right? He was like, no. And I was like, because I know I'm, I may have three other teammates, but I also know that they're either going to listen or they're not going to listen. And it's not going to affect my day. I'm here to play the game and have fun playing the game. And so, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Seth. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask. You made a comment early on, very early at the very beginning, and you said words to the effect: "If I knew a week after, if I knew what I know now, but knew it a week after, he would be here in the kitchen, and I'd be teaching him how to cook." Again. What I said was the information. The information I learned a week after he went missing. If I had known it a week before he went missing. He would have never been missing. He would have been at my house. I see. He would have been with you because you Hindsight's felt like 2020. That. Right. You, you felt know, like the that. information that I learned shortly after he went missing. If I had known that information before, I could have been preemptive about it and I wouldn't be looking for him. Seth, do you believe Sebastian is? You have to have the faith. It's time to activate your savings with a new instant access savings account from Wealthify. Enjoy a competitive. You have to have faith. Well, I can't think of a better way uh, to end this conversation with that message. You have to have faith. God tests us every day. Mm -hmm. He does not put onto our plate what he does not think we can handle. And what he puts on our plate is for watching us grow. Seth, if you had one message or two uh, to send to the people listening today, uh, what would it be? If somebody has my son, let him go. Oh, God, not again. Drop him off at the gas station. To those that are out here helping me find my son, thank you. The goal hasn't been met yet. The goal is to find Sebastian. And you can't stop Sebastian's army. Beautifully said, Seth. Uh, Tony, thank you so much for your volunteering uh, to help Seth get through this uh, media, uh, social media, mainstream media nightmare. Oh, I didn't get to say goodbye. And please tell Seth, you know, that I thank him for coming on. I think he was probably needed a moment. So please let him know, deliver me. the message. Up. But... I feel so bad for Seth, right? 
because we are focusing, we have got to focus on Sebastian. Not all that BS, that train, that crazy train. Because it's like a train crash where the train is all mangled up, right? And you've got carriages everywhere. It's like that. I don't want to be there. So I jumped off that train. Right? I want to focus on Sebastian. Right? I don't want to hear about this and that. But saying that, I have got some stuff I want to show on here. I'll just stop that. And I'll take this off because otherwise you won't see what I'm going to show you. It's in my emails. So I can pull them up. Right, we'll start from here. Hold on, I've got to share it, haven't I? Now, no names are mentioned, and it was on a Facebook page, so it's out there in the public eye. Right? Um, let's see if I can get up a bit closer without losing it. No. It says... Want you to know I agree with all your comments and posts in the groups about Seth. It goes, thank you, yes, I feel, I feel that Seth is innocent in all of this. Next one. It makes me upset when I see people bashing him. Right, the other person goes, well, I want to say, what I know about the DCS reports, but I don't want to get in trouble or cause any problems. Goes on. What do you know? If you feel, if you feel comfortable, I'd like to hear, hear it. Was it about abuse that happened in the home? Yes, it's about that, but I can say that I know that I know who called in the report. I can say I can say she's a mandated reporter and a family member. She didn't tell anyone else in the family, but she called it in anonymously. And we all know who that is now, don't we? She wanted it to be investigated but without anyone knowing who came who it came from. Oh, wow. Was it Seth's mum? Right, Robin. I don't want to name names, but you can figure it out. I can, I can say the Rogers are good folks. Folks. They don't have any, any ill intentions. I know the person didn't even, even, even tell Seth. She was worried about retaliations against her by the proud folks, but she was concerned about Sebastian. Oh, wow. I can totally understand. Yes, a lot of people make anonymous reports because of those reasons, but I know they have to at least give their name to whom they reported it to. How do you know this? Did she tell you? Right, it goes on. Hold on, just check you're seeing all this. Yeah. What my comments saying? Grandpa, you look like a mixed mixed ginger. Bye, bye, Grandpa. Bye. Going to time out for a bit. Oh, I banged. Oh, sorry. I meant to put them in time out. Sorry. A family member of mine is a very close friend of hers. 
They used to work together. She confided in her and she told her she needed to call it in. She was scared, but she knew it was the right thing to do. So this information is coming from a family member of hers, of this woman, who's telling us, who was a close friend of hers. So the woman is telling us this information. It was her family member that was told by whoever. Bit complicated. I agree. It was the right thing to do. This is good to know because so many people were bashing Robin for staying silent. I really think this info should be known to the public. Do you feel comfortable at sharing it? Making an anonymous post? Oh gosh, no. I never made any post. I don't want to say anything in those groups. I just watch and listen. Some of them folk folks get so nasty and it's true they do i'm an older person and and i'm not too techy tech savvy neither am i don't worry neither am i to share this with you i wanted to share this with you since we have chatted and you all say good things in the groups oh thanks yes i try to be respectful in my posts and comments even if I disagree with other opinions, right? I'm not all, I'm not all, I'm not about all that arguing. You know who JLR is, right? Do you mind if I share with him? He's a friend of mine, mine and I trust him. I won't give your name or I can make an anonymous post and promise not to share your name. Yes, I know JLR. I know JLR is. I've seen his videos. I don't know. I just don't want my name out there or to be harassed. I do trust you. You seem like a good lady. You have got to prom promise me that my name won't get out. Yes, I know JLR. My name won't get out. Just, just so you know, I don't know the details of what was called in. I just know that the family member did report it anonymously so it could be looked into. Yes, I understand. I know you haven't mentioned who it was, but I can assure, only assume it was Robin, the grandmother. Based on what you have said, I promise and give you my word that I will never mention your name. But it's good to know that she did the right thing and I think the public should know that. I appreciate you trusting me. Trusting me. Now, that was on a Facebook page. Sorry, Grandpa. Didn't mean to bang you. I'm just putting you in time out. I'm sorry. I come up banged. Right? Now, that was in a Facebook post. Right? So, the woman who's telling the, this woman here this information, it was a family member of hers who knew the person who put the complaint in. And you can tell just by, you didn't even have to, she didn't even have to mention Robin or anything. She didn't because we could have clicked who it was without her even saying that. And when you think it was only Sebastian was the a sworn sworn his grandma to to silence, you know what I mean? So she wouldn't tell anyone. And I said before the reason he wouldn't tell his dad is because he didn't want his dad literally losing it, which I think if. Being a child of mine, and they told me I'd be knocking heads off shoulders. Sorry, you know what I mean? Not sorry. I'd be knocking heads off shoulders. I'd be there with my spade digging the six foot hole for them. I really would. Get that hole dug first. I'd literally put them six foot under. If anything, 
anyone done anything like that to my, my well, not my children now, because my children are grown up, but if anyone did it to anyone, touched my grandchildren like that, you're six foot under. I don't care who you are, who you are you'll be six foot under. You know what I mean? So, I'm glad she did put that reporting. And I hope it's acted on. I hope to God. And the fact that law enforcement have already had that report from Family Services, DCF, whatever it's called over there, they had that report from the beginning. From the beginning. Thank you, SRB. You know what I mean? So they knew all about what was going, what had been going on in that house. And yet they stand there and say there's no evidence of criminal, what is he? Criminal activities or anything like that, something like that. They stand there knowing they've got that information. What isn't criminal about a child have, suffering abuse? I said that Sebastian, even though uh, Chris wasn't in the house, well, just say he wasn't in the house for the whole month. Just say he wasn't. We only needed Chris to be on the phone to Seth and say, you wait till I get back home. That poor lad was living in fear. Living in fear. Exactly. You can't ignore that. How can they ignore that? You know what I mean? No criminal, nothing to show there's being anything of a criminal nature or something like that, how they word it. It doesn't make sense. And Seth even said in that interview last night on the Pascal show, that last interview, he said, if they do another press release interview, I want to see a picture of Sebastian behind them or to the side of them. Because you're talking about a child. You're talking about Sebastian. Yet you've got no picture up. I don't even think he's on there. Still speaks to the fact that the home wasn't... A it, yeah. Exactly. But... What was I going to say now? Um, he wants him to put... Next time they do a press release... He wants to see him with a photo behind Sebastian. They don't care about this child. They really don't. And it get, I live in the UK and I'm getting mad. I am getting so mad with Sumner County law enforcement. But TBI didn't have those papers either. TBI never had them. Right? Because Seth was talking to them and they said, oh, we haven't got them. Well, if I was you, he said, I'd get in touch with Sumner County Law Enforcement because they've got the unredacted paperwork. The paperwork he's got is the redacted ones where they black out 99% of the information. So... So TBI didn't even have that information. Why didn't law enforcement give that to TBI? What the hell are law enforcement doing? They're not pulling out all resources they can do, like getting in touch with CUE organisation. They're not getting in touch with them. They've not given the information about the from child services to TBI. If I was TBI, I'd be saying, right, I want every piece of paperwork, every complaint, every everything in my office yesterday. You know what I mean? 
no more ifs, no more books. I want all that information now. Get it over to my our office today. Because they are playing games now, law enforcement are. Two and a half months, and they've had that information all that time, and they stand there and say there's, there's no cr credible, uh, inf no credible, whatever, to make, to say there's a criminal act. You've got flipping paperwork there telling you something was not right in that house. And you're standing there telling us, I swear to God, law enforcement, someone, someone in the county, you want to be glad. A lot of the um, Sebastian's armies, Sebastian army members group do not live in Tennessee because they will rip you to bits. They will rip you to bits now. Lacks motive, yeah. There's motive. They've got it in black and white. And they're saying there's no criminal act. What? I bet, I wonder if child services over there, when they heard them say that, when they heard law enforcement say, knowing they had that information, when they heard law enforcement say that, I'm wondering, did they say, what? We've just gave you this information and you're not doing nothing about it? What? What is the point of us doing our job if you're not going to do anything about it when we give you the information? So this is why people, like the other day, someone, it was Monday, it was on a post on, another, on the Facebook page again, and it's giving out all the numbers to phone like for the mayor and all that lot, and to get as many people as possible to phone these numbers up on the Monday, right? I'd be phoning them up now and saying, uh, can you tell me why law enforcement haven't done nothing on the uh, report about the uh, from the child services, please? They didn't, I'll say, I'll say they haven't even, they didn't even inform TBI. They, TBI only found out about it because the father phoned them to tell them, right, or something like that, and he said, if you want the unredacted, get in touch with some accounting, because he's got the redacted one. So a lot of that is cut out, but is there's enough that is seen, you know what I mean? To get, ooh. And then he's got his lawyer, and his lawyer phoned him. Apparently, someone phoned up and put a complaint in about Seth, giving that information out. I could never figure out motive before. I only thought it was accident, but now I'm thinking very differently. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, if we're thinking like that, SG, right, if we're thinking like that now, wouldn't TBI be thinking, whoa, we've got this information here and the law enforcement didn't tell us and we've only got it because Seth told us about it, the father, do you think now law enforcement or TBI will do something? I hope to God they do. What do you like or think? Do you think they'll do anything? Or do you think they stay tight lipped and say, we've got nothing to prove a criminal a case? I hope they are. I hope they are now. Because that is, from what I can make out from, by Seth not saying anything, says a lot. Seth not saying anything says a lot. You know what I mean? 
Because if there's nothing there, it's like, you know what, there's nothing there. Subaru Steve, hello. Try to run to the place before something happens. Right, guys. Seth and Kate. Kate, you run to the police before something happens with care and the truth will heal you. She needs to get there first. Because I'll tell you now. Chris has already thrown her under the bus. Do you remember that uh, fa uh, fake com uh, phone call he made where he was making out he was someone else? Yeah? Did you hear that bit where he said, well, I think Katie and Seth know a lot more than they are saying. So he threw her under the bus there by saying that I think Katie and Seth know a lot more than they are saying. Katie, if you just by any chance come across this video, once I can upload it, but I'll put it on my Facebook page and my Twitter account. Well, it's going on to my Twitter account now anyway. It's live on my Twitter. Uh, get people to share it. If anyone sees this, if you see this, Katie, run. Run as fast and as far as you can away from Chris. And something else I've noticed. The fact that Seth just said in in that interview, if I would have known a week earlier. No, I think what he meant by that was, you know, when, like, on the ninth day after Sebastian went missing, the parents did that four-part, well, that interview, yeah? I was going to show that tonight, but then this interview came out, and I thought, no, that's a, that's a happier one. I like that one better. And um, and it was coming out, and then everything that week was coming out about the belt in the belt incident, and how in the interviews they would laugh and they smirk and you know what I mean and nudge each other and think everything like that. Seth was finding all this information out a week after. Sebastian went missing and he said if he'd known about that before he went missing he wouldn't have gone missing because Seth would have had him at mine at his you know what I mean so he's talking about what came out in the interviews the week after he went missing but I think it was a hint at what was in that paperwork I truly do. I think it was a hint at what was in that paperwork. Because that's the first time he said that. In a whole two and a half months, he could have said, in the last two months, he could have said, if I'd known what I knew a week after he went missing, I'd have had him out of that house. Right? But he hasn't. He's always kept saying he didn't know because Sebastian didn't tell him. No, no. I have a feeling Sebastian may be, may be being held in a neighbours for various reasons. No one knows except the person who snatched him. You know what? I hope they find him alive. Every morning, I've said this early, every morning I wake up and I come through, put my TV on, Go and make myself a coffee, sit down, YouTube on, and I close my eyes for about three minutes. I'm going, please, someone give me some good news that Sebastian has been found and is well. Every morning I do that. And I don't see that. And I think if it comes back that is not with us no more. It's going to break me. And this is my first major case. I really doubt. Thank you, Subaru, Subaru Steve. 
but anything, yes. Oh, come on, put them green hearts out. Right? Anything is possible. Anything. So it's just unbelievable what's going on. And I'm, I can't understand why law enforcement was keeping all this information back from Seth. He even stated in that interview last night, right, that um, there is more camera footage that he has not seen. And it was also hinted that there was a, a dash cam camera video but you don't know who's who's the car whose car it was put in whatever but there's a gas cam video as well apparently but we don't know because law enforcement of some county are not talking now i hope to god tbi rip into them from not giving them that paperwork because I know if it was me, I'd be going, hold on, hold on. You've had this from day one. Well, literally day one. And we're just getting to find out about this report now because of the father. You know what I mean? I'd be ripping into that law enforcement. And you know what I'd do if I was TBI? I'd say, you know what? I'm going to grant Seth his wishes. I'd be on the phone, FBI, can you take this case over, please? Because t uh, some of the county police are, are not helping. They're not passing information on. They're holding information back. You know what I mean? And I'll give Seth his wishes and I'll hand it over to FBI. Because there's so much seriously, seriously wrong with that law enforcement. And I'm just so angry. Especially when I heard that. And the fact that there's more footage, camera footage, but they won't show him. Why? Does it have Sebastian being picked up by someone? Does it have Sebastian being thrown into the back of a car somewhere? We don't know. I hope they do, because this is ridiculous now, SG, that apparently law enforcement knew this from day one, had this paperwork literally from day one, and TBI didn't know about it until Seth phoned them and told Bobby. So, it's... They're wrong. And now, people need to start standing up and saying, Law enforcement, you're wrong. No, I'm getting in touch with the FBI myself. I am not having this as a community. They need to get up and say, we are going to the FBI because we can't trust you no more because you won't even tell T TBI all the information. You know what I mean? You've stood there for weeks. Well, two press conferences they've gave. Two, I believe. Right, since they've scaled back the search, I think they've done two, is it? I'm not sure. But they've had this from the beginning and they've stood there a bare-faced lied to us. Lied to us, lied to the TBI. Now, does the law enforcement want to take TBI on? Hmm, looks like they do, don't they? Because they've not been giving TBI all the information. I wonder if TBI have got all the videos. We need a DA to offer immunity to whomever speaks at first. We need um we need a sheriff, a new sheriff who's got the canoe Well what is can I uh canoes, canoes, whatever. To stand up to the proud folks, right? And say, hey, we're not having these. Go arrest them now. 
we need someone to stand up who's big enough to stand up and drive some off and say, we're not having this crap no more. You're going down. It's just a matter of time, Chris and Katie, thoughts. I... <laughs> I don't know, because Katie was the last one to see Sebastian. Now, if they give her a plea deal, right, would it be a bit like the Adam Montgomery case, where his ex-wife did that plea deal with him, where she ended up just doing 18 months? For everything she saw and everything she did, she did 18 months just so that she, she they could get her as a witness against her then ex-husband. You know what I mean? Will it be something like that? Could Katie be the one they make the deal with? Right? Perhaps she is a victim in a way, but I don't know. It's possible she's not even been completely up front with Chris. Possible. Because something stuck out to me the other night. If someone had come in and kidnapped him from the house, why? Right, if someone had come in and kidnapped him from his bed, why would they take his glasses, but no shoes? Hmm? Why would they take his glasses, but no shoes? His dad said he automatically, when he woke up in the morning, and got, got in the morning, he put his glasses on. A bit like me, I wake up in the morning, first thing I do, I reach for my glasses to put my glasses on, just so I can see the flipping time on my phone. That's all it's for, for me. Right, I've said from the get-go there's something she's omitting or changing about the events. Yes, yeah. I've said it, I believe something happened in that bedroom. Perhaps there was an, uh, a little to and fro between her and Sebastian. Because Sebastian wouldn't go to sleep. He wasn't settling down and she was getting mad. But like last night I mentioned that apparently, now this is what I've heard, right? This is what I heard, that she said at 10pm she heard a thud. I don't even have to hear a thud. If I hear a noise coming from my bedroom or my grandkids' bedroom, grandchildren's bedroom, I'm off my sofa. I'm in that bedroom. You know what I mean? So if I heard a thud, it was like I'd literally be jumping off the sofa and running into that bedroom, into those bedrooms. Right? And I said, I think he's gone, something's happened where he then finally fell asleep. Right? Because it's that one thing she says, and it keeps coming back to me all the fucking time. I got up in the morning and I went in and I went into his room and woke him up. And he was gone. How do you wake someone up if they are not there? Yeah. I keep referring back to that one, well, there's a couple of things she says. But it's just that one thing she said. She went in and woke him up. And he was gone. Now that's something you say when you go into wake someone up. 
and they passed in the night. You know what I mean? Sit they've gone. They've gone. So uh, I think he passed in in his sleep, and could have been an overdose. Perhaps she did give him his medicine, but because he wasn't sleeping, she's either gave him more of his medicine, or gave him something of hers, which you don't do. You don't give anyone your medication. I know I pinch some painkillers some time off my son. You know what I mean? Or if I've got painkillers here and he hasn't brought his. He'll say, have you got any of this, Mum? I go, yeah, I've got these. Right? So, I think something happened where she... It wasn't settling down and she gave him something to settle him down more. He's gone to sleep and that's when he's passed. And rather than being logical, logical, and phoning emergency team, emergency response team, ERT, whoever, and explaining to them what had happened, they go and hide his body. Why? It's not going to get your daughter back, Chris, by hiding her body. Getting rid of a body is not going to get your daughter back. Oh, yes, yeah, she uses script, SG. Yeah, she does. It's the way she talks. You know, when she talks about Sebastian, he likes, he likes building things. He likes, my, he likes his Minecraft. It's like it's written down. It's like me saying... <laughs> Okay, I'll read, I'll read what I put down today. Right? I put, this, it's like me saying, DCFS. Seth has information. Seth has attorney. attorney. Summer, County, Summer County had the records from the beginning. More than just one incident, more than just one incident or more, vigil this weekend, MC ride this weekend. It's a bit like that. You know what I mean? It's a bit like she's reading off a piece of paper. I caught him, her waking him up first thing, and then she went to the kitchen. Exactly. Why would you go to the kitchen? You have to come through the kitchen to get to his bedroom. Exactly. She could barely come up with anything positive. You notice on that one interview, I don't know, it was the first interview they did with the news people, right? WS, WSMV4, that first interview. Do you notice how they didn't say his name? They didn't say his name once, and he kept referring to Katie as mum which is a bit weird. I can understand if you say Sebastian was in the living room and you've come downstairs, Chris has come downstairs, he's going to Sebastian, where's your mum? Right? I can understand then. But when Sebastian isn't in the room, you don't go, Mum, can you pass me some juice through? When you come through, can you bring me some water? You don't, you say, Katie, can you... Um, Pass us a, a, can of, a can of Coke or whatever out of the fridge. You know what I mean? So, SRB, if she did overdose him, in my opinion, she would have thrown out medicine container. However, if law enforcement is smart, they'll look at pharmacy to see how much medication was dispensed and how long it should last. That's why they don't want the dog in there. Yeah, he likes to hide around corners. Um, have you seen the view of that house, inside of that house? Right? He can hide around one door which leads into the dining area from the kitchen. 
there's another little entrance way which I don't know which where that leads to. It might be the laundry room. He could hide behind there. And he could probably hide behind the door the doorway opposite the kitchen because there's another room opposite the kitchen sort of thing. There's not many places he could hide behind. I have had hardwood floors. My daughter is always dropping her phone on her feet or a video game. So I stop checking on her. But if it's bedtime, damn, damn right I'm checking in on what's going on. Exactly. I've seen... Oh, hello, Kim. Sorry. Sorry about that, Kim. I've seen it there. There's no corn ex except maybe one. Exactly. It is an open concept. There's no doors, apart from on the bedrooms and the front door and the back doors. But the rest of the house is all open. My 18-year-old drops stuff above me too, and I call him. Funny I know he went out front door and went poof. Yes, poof. Also, Chris said if he went out back door, it would make such a noise. So much noise, we would. Yes, I caught that as well. Don't worry, I caught that. After she knew about how many minutes she spent looking for him, three. Nothing out there, right? Well, she only. Well, she was telling. Everyone at first, she was gone for like 45 minutes searching, driving around. But she wasn't. She was gone 10 minutes now. Hello, hello, Bob. Bob Dale. Sorry, I'm missing everyone here. Um, 10 minutes is just long enough to go up to the school. And if you look at the school, you can turn into the school. But then there's that road you follow around the school that leads you onto that road by that shop everyone's been talking about. Yes. Three is the number. If someone keeps using the same amount, same number in everything, like you've got three minutes looking for him. Three, um... 30 minutes, okay, it's 30 minutes, but it's got the three, uh, no, three hour phone call, sorry. Uh, what else was three in it? Um, there is a lot of threes in their interviews. You know what I mean? And it's just to keep them focused so that they don't get their numbers mixed up when they're telling the lie. So then people can't say, oh, Don, you said you look for him for five minutes. Now you're telling us you look for him for three minutes. So it's just to keep them on track. Yeah, 3.37 to get home. Jules and a god are out there searching, praying Sebastian is found soon. They won't have Gaita in the house, Kim, because Gaita, Gaita, sorry, can't find medication. Hi there, Bob. 943 or 946 for the beginning of phone call. Yes. S R. Uh, what's that one? Um, sorry. I'm meant for detecting lies. People usually use number three. Yes, they do. They do. They keep to that small number so then they can't go wrong. They can't be caught out. Uh, but there's so many number threes in their interviews when they talk. There really is. 
so that they can't get caught out. They can't get caught out on a lie. As I said, if they come out and say, oh, look around the house, I, I spent five minutes looking around the house, right? So she said that. And then she come out and said, and then, well, I was looking around the house for three minutes. Hold on, you soldiers, you was looking for five minutes. Now it's gone to three minutes. You know what I mean? So th three is a number they use for everything. And it just so happens it is three hours, 30 summit minutes from his work's home. Right? 3 a.m. in the morning is when they're seeing the so-called lights. So, it's just full of lies. And now, we're just normal people. We're just people who, who, who go to work every day or whatever you do. We're just normal, everyday Joe Blogs sort of thing. We are not think special. We don't, I don't spend hours, well, some days I do, but I don't spend every day researching. Yeah, a lot of people have, but as I said, if you look at the map, if you, when you turn into the school, if you follow that road round the school, it leads you onto that road where the shop was, so then she could come back down that road towards the lights, go past the shop, and take another ride home. And that's her doing, that's 10 minutes drive, plus a few minutes spare. You know what I mean? So she could have been a hangover there. But if there's, if people saw Kathy, CP's mom, would they not have seen a hangover? And if so, if they have got video cam, car camera, right, of something suspicious going on, why haven't they made an arrest? Or are they just gathering more evidence to get together and then do the arrest, which they could do? Because I know in some states in the USA, once they arrest them, they have something like 90 days. If they say, if, if, say they arrest Kate and CP, Kate and CP could go for a quick trial, which means they've got 90 days to get everything together, the paperwork, right, everything, the witnesses, the videos, they've got to get all that together. They've got 90 days to get all that put together. But if they hold off until they've got everything in a nice little row, right, where they've got the witnesses, they've got the statements, they've got the videos, they've got all these lies, all these lies I've been saying on online, right, once they've got all that in a row, that's when they'll do the arrest. Look at Michael Stern, right? With um, that young girl that got... But who went missing the same day as Sebastian was found four days later. Right? Magdalene. Yeah, it was Magdalene, wasn't it? Yeah, Magdalene Soto. They arrested him on first for having all those photos on his phone. And people kept saying, hold on, I've got to catch up on this. People kept saying, why haven't they charged him yet with the murder? Why haven't they charged him? We know it was him. You know what I mean? But they didn't have to rush. He was sitting in a prison cell. But if they had charged him straight away, he could have said, the judge could have said, right, you've got 90 days to put this in front of me and go to court and go to trial. Trial. You know what I mean? They would have had to have seen two vehicles together. People have claimed to see only one. Yeah, 
That's what I was thinking. It's only one car I've seen. I've not seen two cars. So, I don't know. It's just weird. If Kathy was there, why was she there so early? When there's a there's got to be a shop up by her somewhere, more local to her. Yes, I believe that, SG. The cover-up is usually worse than the crime. I do believe that. But, oh, just thought of something. You know in that one interview where she's really, you could see she's really, really upset, right? And she kept rocking back and forth, right? And at the end, she said, they said something to her, and she said, but they haven't found him yet, yeah? And he, he turned round to her and said, they will, right? Have you ever thought that um, she knew what, what she had done? When she got up in the morning and found him alive, she realised what she's doing, and that is her guilt going through her. It's just guilt. I don't want to be saying this. I need to tell the truth. And she can't. So that is like a guilt inside of her coming out. You know what I mean? She probably wanted to say the truth about what happened. But Chris is saying, no, you can't do that. I'll lose every chance of getting my daughter. I, we'll lose your job. You'll, we'll lose our home. You know what I mean? So I think that first interview, it's like, you know when you want to tell someone something and you can't? It's like, oh, God. I've done it. I've been there. I've known something and... I've been in the room with this person, and I'm thinking, oh, God, I so want to tell them. You know what I mean? But you can't. And I've sat there rocking back and forth, going, oh, God, I so want to tell them. But you can't. That's how I think she was. She so wanted to tell the truth then, but she couldn't. And that's why she was so upset, because she wanted, she knew what had happened. And she wanted to tell the truth. But Chris was the one saying, no, don't tell the truth. Don't. You know what I mean? Because he's controlling. People say she's not so such a victim, really. But I don't know. It's, it's, easy, it's so easy for someone to get you in that trap. Someone like him. She, yes, you could be in martial arts, black belting or martial arts or whatever. Uh, she's been in the Navy, so, but sometimes women will go, will do anything to be with this man. They will put up with anything to be with that man. They look similar, they look similar, similar, but they're not the same. Because if you look at her back window of her car, passenger windows on the back of her car, and look at the Kathy's back window of her car. There's a slight difference in the windows. But I truly think she wanted to tell the truth that day. But she couldn't. You know what I mean? But it's that deepest delight that gets me at the very beginning. I know, that makes me, I, I don't think it was um, planned. I really don't. Yeah, I've got to go as well, SRB. Thank you for being here tonight and thank you for subbing. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, I've got to get going. It's 20 past 10. I've got to take my medication, so I've got to get going. 
thank you everyone here on YouTube and all those sitting in the hedges thank you for being here and on Twitter thank you and we'll look into this a bit more tomorrow night okay thank you SG Dippy Bird you're running late tonight, really right late. SRB, you're welcome. Have a great evening. Thank you, SG. Yes, you're late. I'm just about to go. We was watching that interview with... Um... Oh, God, what's the name? Oh, I can't find, I can't remember a name now. It's on my Facebook account. Hold on. Uh, I can't find it now. Hold on. But we've been watching the interview where... <laughs> well, you won't be able to see this on my YouTube channel at the moment because I had to reboot my laptop right now I've got into thank you Bob I've got into all my other social network sites but YouTube I can't get into right so I'm waiting to hear off them if I don't hear off them by tomorrow I'm emailing them again but if you're on my Facebook Right, I'll put my Facebook up here. Oh, God. Right, well, I'll just gotta get my Facebook up. Oh, there it is. Silly me. I'll put my link up here. Please come and join me on... Um, my Facebook, right? Drip, oh, SG Drip. <laughs> oh, my God. What you like, SG? Anyway, so, uh, we've been watching that interview where he was talking with this other YouTuber. Really good. And that's on my Facebook page as well, right? So if you want to watch that full interview, go and watch it. It's all about Sebastian. He talks about when he met Kath, when he met Katie, when they got married, right? When she got pregnant and how he was there for the birth and all that lot. It's really, really good. It takes, it going back to focus on Sebastian. So we watched that tonight while we listened to it. We didn't watch it. We listened to that tonight, that tonight. And then we are just talking about some messages that was put up on a Facebook page. And I'll post them up on my page later as well. So please, Dippy, go and join my Facebook page. You'll catch my live on there. Okay? And I'm sorry you come in late. <laughs> Teach you next time to get here on time. Teach it, won't you? <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you everyone for being here. I've really enjoyed our night tonight. Hopefully, I'm glad I've got my volume and my mic sorted out. Just got to get back onto my YouTube channel. Right. So, I'll see you all soon. I'll be back on tomorrow night. Hopefully, on my YouTube channel as well. So, I'll see you tomorrow. So, until then, hold on, I'll just get my little ending up, what I like to play. And until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Is there no sound?
Why is there no sound? Oh god, no sound. Oh god, I'll put some music on for you. For some reason there's no sound for some reason. <laughs> 